Good morning. It is a little bit after 5 a.m. It has warmed up to a pretty warm negative one degrees. Anytime it warms up that much overnight, like, uh, geez, I guess it warmed up. It was negative 22. It means one of a few things. It means it's either gonna snow, it did snow, or both. So I haven't been outside yet. I thought I heard a little bit of movement on the roof. So there's a chance we had some snow. There's a chance it's snowing right now. Pretty excited for today on a musky water to try to catch some musky. I'm also gonna try to jig one. I've never caught one on a jig rod. That'd be really fun, I think. I've caught pike, I've caught pickerel, which are in the same family on jig rods. And man, they just, they're a lot of fun because they make some really long, hard runs on you and peel just a bunch of drag. Breakfast this morning is gonna be some potatoes with onions and peppers mixed in. And I'm in luck today. My buddy's wife, who's also my friend, Chrissy, makes the best bread, homemade bread I've ever had. She says it's easy, but she says everything's easy. She makes everything look pretty easy. But every time I go up there, she makes that bread and it is incredible. So I'm gonna throw some butter on that bread and throw that in the pan and crisp that up. And probably a couple of chicken eggs. And we're going to have a pretty good breakfast to drive into me before the day today. Going to run out, get the bait, come back in, and get set up for musky. For some reason, my coffee's not perking. I've never had that happen before. I don't know if I put too much water in or not, so I took out a cup of water. That water is ripping, boiling. Doesn't want to come up through the spout. Maybe the bottom's bent or something, I don't know. Well, I could keep pouring it over it, I guess. That pan's done, but I'm waiting for the coffee. It's plenty hot enough, I know that. There we go. Guess I just had to prime the pump. I've <laughs> never had that happen. Well, toast is ready, potatoes are ready. Got room for one egg in there. Let's give it right to it. frozen <laughs> frozen solid almost solid come on out of there how's a frozen egg sound well we're gonna have a frozen egg and got some leftover steak so we could have steak and eggs
<laughs> All right, let's see what she looks like out there. Yep, definitely got a little bit of snow. Snowing right now. <laughs> Every time. Baby. Everything is alive. That's awesome. I don't like that clip right there. Zip tie these down just so they don't open up on the trail. And we'll unplug it. Ready to go? Thing of beauty. Right, guys I have no idea the depth here first time ever on this lake I know it's supposed to be 20 or it could be 14 which is quite a difference for the deepest spot so what we have is a main lake point here we got some flow going that way so a really good spot to start is right off the point so I'm about 120 feet off the point and I'm gonna set my string out according to depth I'd really like to find like a, a weed edge or a drop off but not being a big musky fisherman myself, I might be able to catch some shallow, I might be able to catch some deep. This is a really good way to figure it out. And I forgot my battery back in the shack. Be right back. <laughs> I 
got it. This is definitely dirty water. Ooh, no water right there. Wow. All right, we got about, geez, three foot. Is it worth setting? So we got to get out in the lake a lot further to find some water. Nah, I don't even think I want to set this one. Let's get a little deeper. six there that's good so there's six plus the leader all right we got about 10 foot that's a good start how about that for bait that is a monster that's a sea smelt right there guys that's a that's a good sizer right there we're gonna set him couple feet off the bottom. All right, I was setting up my hut to jig at him and we got a high flyer. First trap I set. Let's go take a peek. doing anything right now. Might have just been the bait. Let's take a look. Now she's off to the side. Okay. Ah. Can't tell. Might have just been bait. Let's see if she's chewed. It's not chewed. Could have been the bait. I'm going to go ahead and tuck that up into my rubber band. Ah, we'll give it one more try, actually. I got four traps in, leaving me one extra line so I could jig with. In Maine, you're allowed five lines per person on most bodies of water. That's general state law. We've got kind of a cool sky for snowing. Looks like the sun's poking through and we got some clouds. It's snowing pretty hard down lake. But it looks like it's gonna clear off pretty soon. I'm setting up that Otter XT Pro. I think it's the cabin. And it's fighting me today. Usually it's pretty easy. I've only used it a couple times so far since I bought it. But today it's fighting me pretty hard. I don't know what's going on. So I'll go figure it out. Get that set up and get inside and do some jigging with the electronics. Oh. 
Ooh, that might have taken some. I can't tell if it's a fish or just a smelt. I think just the smelt. Alright, so that smelt's tripped me twice. I'm going to go ahead and put him inside my bait band so he can't do that again. I'll show you guys how that works. I got a bait band on the bottom of my trap. Just a rubber band. I'm going to get it up to the depth I want to set it. Roughly right there. I pinch the line back, make a loop, pinch the line back, lift up that rubber band and just tuck it underneath. And if you put it in the corner, it gets even more tension on it. So now that that smelt is only pulling against the rubber band. He's not pulling against the reel anymore. And then when a fish hits it, you hope he hits it with enough force. He will hit it with enough force where he rips it right out of that rubber band. And then it engages the spool, and the spool engages the flag mechanism. So the next time that baby goes up, should be a fish. Surprised we haven't had more flags. That trap out there, I just put a little shiner on with a 2 aught hook. These ones right here, these three all have big, huge sea smelts on them with 2 to 4 aught hooks. All right, it's nine o'clock and I haven't had a real flag yet. I just had the two flags that pretty sure the smelt tripped that. So it's time to move around, see if we can find some fish. I can't believe if they're in here that they're not gonna bite. So let's make a move. Finally, we got a high flyer. Let's go get it. Like it's doing anything. That is off the side some. Oh yeah. That should be a fish. Feels like the bait again. Nah. Can't tell if there's a fish there or not. I should just hit him. Ah. Uh, it was a fish. I ripped it out. Dang it. I'm gonna leave that there so the reel doesn't freeze up. Go get some bait. Pretty cool I just saw a moose right up here just ran up into the, the ridge I, I came off the lake real quick just to look at this trail and a moose just ran up there didn't have any antlers they shouldn't have any this time of year so I can't tell what it was but I'm gonna go up turn around and get back on the traps well it's a little after 11 a.m. and not really doing too well haven't I haven't got one fish yet might have just had one messing with me, something real small, but it could have just been the smell. That was a tank smell. Not knowing the pond, I don't know if it's slow and I just gotta wait it out or if I gotta jump around and find them, but 
kind of feeling like I gotta go find them. So I think I'm gonna go eat a grilled cheese sandwich and then I'm gonna move some traps even more, shift them into this cove. I'm thinking like if I'm gonna try to catch a pickerel or a pike and I was back home, I would definitely look for like a grassy shallow cove and then a drop off outside of it. I'm not really finding any deep water at all and I've jumped around like seven or eight different holes for jigging and the deepest I found is about 10, 11 foot tops. I'm finding really, really small yellow perch. I guess they're yellow perch and they're about the size of my lure and they come up and kind of play with my lure for safety and numbers, I think. But they're not even really catchable. I've had a couple nip at it. So time to eat a grilled cheese and then regroup and try to pull it together. I've, in the meantime, what I did was I just went around, checked all my bait, I rebate. All right, just shifted one. We got a cove over here. I'm guessing it's weedy. Had about eight foot of water, which surprised me. I didn't know how shallow it was going to get. So I might be able to go in further if I shift another one, but not catching fish, not getting flags. Uh, you gotta, you gotta get out fishing. And this is fishing is moving them around and trying different depths, just like trying different lures and and uh, making different types of casts when you're when you're open water fishing or trying different areas of the lake. So similar, you know, the conditions aren't terrible today so I can move around pretty easy too. So I'm gonna find these fish if they're in here. Might have to go to the other end of the lake to do it, but we're gonna make sure this end of the lake's either good or bad first. All right, we got a flag. This was a small sucker. Looks like we got some line missing. That's good. Off to the side, pretty good. I'd like to see it go again. There's a fish. There's a fish. That feels all right. All right. Oh no. No, oh, fudge. <laughs> Popped off right in the hole. Did he pop off or break me off? He bit me off. Dang it. I was like a probably four pound musky. Dang it. Oh, four pound musky went to get them out of the hole and cut me off. They got crazy sharp teeth, but got a good look at them. It's beautiful, beautiful green colors on them. So they're in here. <laughs> it's about 1230. Had two flags since noon, so it's starting to pick up. Maybe it's an afternoon deal here. I'm going to go get another hook and get another bait and re-rig.
right, one, I don't like driving under widow makers like that, and two, I could use those as dead heads to hold down my shack in this wind. That should block the wind from knocking those walls in. I don't know if you saw in yesterday's, but my screw downs all got dulled or bent pretty good, and I only was able to get two in the ice, so I got one on each corner of the shack diagonally, and I didn't have any to go to the tie downs or the other corners. So I put a bunch of snow down on the apron to hold it down from blowing away, and then this. This log right here should be enough to hold the sides from blowing in. It's no fun when the side blows in and knocks your table over and knocks everything off the table on the floor or on your bed. I've had that happen before in a hurry. another little shift on. Doesn't seem like the outside ones were getting any action. So I'm going to set them in a little closer to shore. So far the only action I've had has been inside. Not too far from the bank. So we're going to we're going to run with that for today. Doesn't mean that's the answer, but cuz we don't really have enough data to compare. All right, just shifted this one and she's up. Let's see the line. Uh, straight down, maybe. Looks pretty well straight down. Feels like nothing. Uh, maybe something little nibbling on it. I can't just beat my smelt, can it? Feels like something a little bit more than my smelt. But not a lot more. Now he feels like he dropped it. Not really chewed or anything. Guys, it's 3.30 and I don't have any fish on the ice at all. This is crazy. It's a tough day. Shouldn't be. Fishing a new body of water that I don't know a lot about. It could be a slow lake. Could be I brought too big a bait. So far, the two that got whacked pretty good, you know, the one I broke off on was a small shiner. 
and then the other one was a smaller sucker. So they haven't really been mowing on the sea smelt. I think I pulled the sea smelt out of one's mouth, but if it if it was, it wasn't a very big fish. So it could be I just got the wrong bait. Could be they're not biting. Could be there's not many in here. A lot of factors could be in play right now, but I've shifted every trap except for two, and I've shifted a couple of them even more than once. So I, I think I got them in what I think is going to be the best areas. I've had three legitimate flags, and I'm kind of keying in on that depth and that distance from shore for the other ones that I just shifted. And we got about an hour and a half left of sunlight to try to get one bite. It is four o'clock. I'm going to go around and give them all one more shake up. Try to get that smell of skunk out of the air that's settling in pretty hard. One last chance. chance I didn't think that was gonna happen no fish on the ice had a couple chances there definitely had a couple hits and hit and runs and then of course I had that one in the hole had its head just about out and the line snipped I swear these musky have sharper teeth than pike because that wasn't that big a fish he was under five pounds and he hit that 30 pound like it was nothing. He sliced it like a hot knife going through butter. I don't really know what went wrong. I gotta go with location, I guess, more than anything. I mean, it could have just been they weren't biting. It could be that I have too big of bait, you know, with those great big sea smelts. I was pretty surprised when I was hole hopping earlier to try to find some musky or perch. You know, the only perch I was seeing on the panoptics were probably two inches you know, two to four inches at best. They were tiny. They couldn't even get to the hook. So maybe they're eating a lot of really small stuff in here. And, but tomorrow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head down lake, which is actually up lake. I'm going to head to the southern end, which is the which is the inlet, the outlet on the north end of this one. There's a weird area of Maine where it flows north. So I'm going to head down and try to fish that area. I'm guessing there's more grass down there when my buddy Jeffrey fishes this in open water he said there's a pretty good couple good grass lines down there that he's caught some musky in but it was years ago so hopefully there's some more fish in this pond i'll mix it up i'm gonna go through my tackle again and i'm gonna probably tie some steel leaders with smaller hooks and i'm gonna send down some of those shiners the biggest shiners i can get down home were like two two and a half inches so maybe we'll get a little bit more action with those some, some smaller hooks some shiners and the steel leader hopefully won't. I mean, this water is super tannic. Like, it's crazy tannic when you pull up the auger. It just, phew, everything turns like tea. So I doubt it has to be fluorocarbon. So I might switch four liters and just put one for fluorocarbon. And then put some smaller hooks on and go with some smaller bait. I'll still throw down a big sea smelt and like an average size sucker. And then the rest I'll try shiners tomorrow i am gonna dress down get these bibs off and and make sure i'm dry everywhere and probably do a little bit more reading it's still early for dinner and then figure on something for dinner tonight i know i got some greens in there i want to eat up temp is dropping pretty hard right now we're at negative two it peaked out today at eight above zero so that was kind of pleasant for a little while there i had a couple flags mm, like mid-morning that could have been the bait it could have been something tripping it and then the the real flags where there were definitely fish running all happened like between 12 and 12 30 and then nothing after that so i fished hard you know i moved traps i i uh reset the bait up and down i changed bait out 
switch traps around inside, outside. Yeah, just didn't work out. Sometimes that happens when you're fishing. Could happen on your home water that you're used to and the chances go up when you're somewhere else. I mean, I grew up fishing a lot of small ponds and small lakes and I always said there's a, such a thing as small pond syndrome where everything's either on or everything's either off. You know, there's no like decent fishing in it. Like when you're on a great big lake, you could usually find areas that the fish are still biting. But on these little bodies of water, it seems like it's either all on or all off. And I'd have to say today was all off, I hope. <laughs> so tomorrow, let's hope for it being all on. It's going to be pretty bitter cold, I think, tomorrow. We'll see. Not super hungry for much for dinner tonight. I got all sorts of food here, but I think I'm just going to drive some okra into me with a big slice of homemade toast and call that pretty good. Okra, I just throw it in the pan with some olive oil and garlic and put it on low heat and kind of let it crisp up a little bit. Boy, is that good. That's a pretty good dinner. Well, that's going to do it for tonight, guys. Sorry I couldn't get any fish on the board for you. No one's more upset about it than me, though. I guarantee you that. But I'm not really upset about it. It's It comes and goes. I mean, I've had days where it's just smasher days where you're non-stop flags and catching fish. And every once in a while, you got to have one of these days where you get skunked or or lose one at the ice or at the boat. So you remember how tough the days can be and how good the days are on the opposite side. So, you know, you gotta take the good and the bad, the highs and the lows. Still a great day. I'm up here. I haven't seen a person for over 24 hours. It's been, Jesus, it's been probably 35 hours. No, not quite. Yeah, over 35 hours probably. I haven't seen another person. I have this whole wilderness to myself right now, so that's pretty awesome. I did see a moose today. I couldn't get the camera out quick enough for you guys when I was checking out a trail to a logging road. There was a moose in the road. It was pretty cool to see. I was probably 100 yards from it, but it skedaddled up on top of a ridge before I could pull the camera out. And GoPros aren't really ideal for wildlife videography either, but it was cool. It's not every day you get to see a moose while you're ice fishing. And I did see a muskie. I had almost forgotten how emerald that green is and how pretty that is. It's like, uh, it's almost like curly tiger maple on a, on a nice piece of furniture, but with that emerald green mixed in, it's, it's, oh, it's just such a beautiful fish. And I had him by the, I had him for a second. He just slipped away. I was hoping you know, with 20 something inches of ice that he'd be pinned in that hole. And if it was a bigger fish, it would have been, but he was small enough. He could kind of get turned and back, back down pretty quick, but I'm going to hit the rack. I am going to do a little bit more reading. I'm pretty, pretty much into this book called the Penobscot man about the river drives on the Penobscot river and talking about the history of a ball and rip genus and, and a lot of cool areas that I, I've, spent some time in some really old stories i think the book was published in 1904 thanks again for tuning in guys hopefully better luck tomorrow i will be racking my brain all night on how i could do a better job catching fish we're definitely going to try further down and against a bank tomorrow to see if we can find a weed line and uh we'll try in and out down there and maybe even try jigging too i re-rigged all my tackle except for one we're going to run fluorocarbon on one has a decent sized hook. I'll throw a smelt on that one. And the other four now have 30 pound wire leader to a two aught gamakatsu hook. We'll dunk some of the shiners, even though they're fairly small, and what's left of the suckers too. They say muskies like the fish of either a thousand casts or 10,000 casts. I don't know which one it is, but I'm just hoping it's not the fish of a thousand flags or 10,000 flags. Cause I did have a handful of flags today on the bright side. And don't really have much to show for it, but that is fishing. Did he eat it? I think he ate it. Guys, I think he ate it. I think we got a muskie on.
All right, we are set up. Two shiners, two suckers. Got them. Oh, nice. Nice head shakes. Got them. Oh, yeah. That'll be all you. Man, these things got a lot of fight to them. Got him. Got him. Ooh, that feels heavy. That's on the feet, bro. High flyer time. Oh, no, he's there. <laughs> he came right at me. Whoa, whoa. I think he ate it. Guys, I think he ate it. I think he got a musky. I'm going to hit him. Got him. Got him. Got him, guys. Got a musky. Got him. Yeah, it was a musky. I think there's one there. Yep, there's one there. 